morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz for Thursday the 28th of August 2025. Here is your national weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning over into the southeast of the nation with some pretty significant storms seemingly be coming through throughout the remainder of this week. It sure has been a turbulent one for Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia, parts of New South Wales and also parts of the Australian Capital Territory with heaps of low pressure systems moving through, heaps of showers, heaps of rainfall, heaps of snowfall as well and some very strong wind gusts as well. It's been a stormy one, a week of winter's weather as we were saying a week ago uh, and there is still plenty more to come especially throughout the course of today but tomorrow the crescendo of the weather event is going to be moving through into the southeast of Australia especially into the mainland parts of southeastern Australia and we are expecting a very significant storm to grip the southeast of the nation uh, tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Uh, right now though we do have plenty more showers still to be talking about. We've had an onslaught of showers to the west coast of Tasmania into the last 24 hours and that's expected to continue throughout the course of today. Not only that, but showers moving through into the northern half, the great uh, into the um, Bass Strait. And you can see those showers have been moving through into the southern half of Victoria as well into the last 24 hours. We have had some heavy rainfall accumulations here and there. These showers moving quickly from west to east are also presenting Victoria with some pretty significant wind observations. Hogan Island blew at about 80 kilometres an hour for a period last night, currently at 54 kilometres an hour out of the west, 42 kilometres an hour at Wilson's Promontory and 46 kilometres an hour here at South Channel Island. They're the strongest wind observations in Victoria at this point in time. The mountainous regions are actually a little bit calmer than what they have been blowing at as of late. Same deal with the snowy mountains in Victoria. We have had some strong wind gusts around Threadbow. It doesn't look like the uh, automatic weather station is showing up here this morning, but some strong wind gusts again there this morning and severe weather warning current for a large swathe of mountainous regions of New South Wales. Matt Syker Island, Island, as you would expect, taking the cake with the wind observation, 70 kilometres an hour out of the west. And as you can see, with more showers streaming through in this speckled cloud here in the Great Australian Bight and into the Bass Strait, showers are expected to continue and those winds are going to continue to be blowing quite strong throughout the course of today. And that's no better. Uh, that's highlighted no better than on the forecast modelling here. Showers expected to continue, and in fact, they will actually enhance a little bit throughout the course of today. We're expecting showers to spread right through Victoria into the remainder of this morning, into early this afternoon, up into the southern parts of New South Wales, in fact. And showers are going to become widespread through the Air Peninsula as well. They'll be on and off here and there. And then through tonight into early tomorrow morning, we're going to see a low pressure system develop towards the west of Tasmania. And this is the big weather system that we've been harping on about for the last couple of days. This one is going to pack a punch. So with showers and storms going to pull away from uh, Victoria and New South Wales much later on tonight into early tomorrow morning. Same deal with Tasmania. We're going to see the frontal systems uh, associated with this low pressure system then begin to move in towards South Australia through early tomorrow morning. This will bring strong winds for a brief period of time and also some moderate rainfall accumulations for a brief period of time as well. But we're not worried about the initial leading edge of the cold front. We're worried about what lies behind this weather system here. You can see the low pressure system right now with a pressure of 993 millibars at midday tomorrow moving then very close to King Island, dropping to 990 millibars and then moving into the Bass Strait through later Friday afternoon into Friday evening and then by Friday night slowly creeping out into the Tasman Sea which by then on Saturday morning will become a stronger system an even stronger system actually into the Tasman Sea pulling away from mainland Australia and then off towards New Zealand in fact with conditions clearing as early as Saturday morning or late Saturday morning for mainland Australia this is going to be a short but sharp and a very very violent weather system later tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. The only major change to the forecast from yesterday is the arrival of this system. It's actually expected to happen about two or three hours earlier, which means Friday afternoon is looking to be the worst time for weather at this point in time as opposed to Friday evening. Uh, but apart from that, no location changes, no impacts changes, either the forecast remaining rock solid this morning. Winds are, of course, the main threat. So whilst we're going to be seeing on and off showers here and there throughout much of South Australia, Victoria, parts of Tasmania, and also for parts of New South Wales and the Capital Territory, winds are going to be the main threat. This is sustained winds at midday on Friday. You can see a torrent of winds here barreling in towards the Robe area or between Robe and uh, Adelaide, pushing uh, in excess of 80 to 90 kilometres an hour with maximum wind gusts here up to 115 kilometres an hour. So nearly destructive wind clarification moving through into this part of South Australia. A wide swathe of South Australia as well, including all of the Air Peninsula and then up in towards the Riverlands area as well. And then as far north as basically the Queensland, New South Wales border, we'll be seeing damaging wind gusts and some strong wind gusts can be expected through the Flinders Ranges, around Lake Torrens, and even as far north as Lake Air winds could exceed 70 or even 80 kilometres an hour for a brief period of time. As this low pressure system pulls closer to the Bass Strait, we're going to see these winds really tighten up around the Victoria, New South, uh, the Victoria South Australia border. And we'll see some very strong wind gusts move into this part of South Australia for a brief period of time around Robin Mount Gambia 
through tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Winds aren't expected to be strong through Victoria until about four or five o'clock tomorrow afternoon and evening into the western half of the state. And with these strong winds coming in from the west, conditions are going to, te to deteriorate from the west. So whilst winds around the Melbourne area aren't going to be anything too serious, in fact, maximum wind gusts are around 60 to 70 kilometres an hour expected, and that pales in comparison to the winds that are going to be uh, seen at about three or 400 kilometres towards the west at that time. We will still, still see some strong wind gusts in the Victorian Alps and also through the New South Wales high country in the Snowy Mountains. Wind gusts could exceed 125 kilometres an hour through Friday afternoon and into Friday evening. It's going to be when this low pressure system moves towards the east of the Furneaux Islands in the Bass Strait, we'll see a violent shift suddenly in these winds. So uh, they'll turn from going out of the west or the northwest to right out of the south and they will rocket into the west coast of uh, Victoria. You can see here down around Waterball and uh, Apollo Bay winds averaging 100 kilometres an hour, gusting up around that 115 to 125 kilometre an hour mark, sparing Melbourne for the most part through later Friday afternoon and evening, but then through Friday night around midnight into early Sunday morning, we're going to see these winds rocket in towards the Melbourne area and they'll exceed 100 kilometres an hour for at least a brief period of time through Friday night into Saturday morning, finally beginning to ease off after about three or four o'clock on Saturday morning, but not really pulling away from the Victoria or from, from the Melbourne area until about sunrise tomorrow uh, Saturday morning, and then not pulling away from Victoria until much later on on Saturday morning and into very early Saturday afternoon. This system here is expected to be much windier than a typical weather system. So whilst we're not expecting anything crazy in the way of rainfall, and even other impacts from this system aren't anything out of the usual or uh, out of the unusual or anything that's going to be record breaking, this weather system is going to have some much stronger wind gusts than what we would normally see from a low pressure system, especially of this magnitude and of this uh, proximity to the Australian mainland. You can see here again on Saturday morning, offshore, albeit from the New South Wales coastal, but still very strong winds up around the 120 to even 125 kilometre an hour mark, and that will increase closer to 130 kilometre an hour uh, later on on Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon as this weather system pulls further out into the Tasman Sea. It doesn't look like these winds are going to be a massive problem to the New South Wales coastal, but it gives you an idea that we will still be seeing some very strong wind gusts early Saturday morning across a wide swathe of the central coast of New South Wales, extending about as far north as Tari or Foster into the mid-north coast of New South Wales. In fact, with the strongest winds possible around Point Perpendicular and then in around the uh, Illawarra forecast district in the Illawarra coastline through Boral and then Wollongong and some strong winds also expected into the Hunter River Valley as well. And that will be before this system pulls well away from the Australian mainland and further out into the Tasman Sea. If you haven't noticed, the northwest corner of Tasmania isn't actually expected to cop too much in the way of significant uh, or significantly strong winds. We will still see some strong wind gusts pushing close to 80 or 90 kilometres an hour for the northwest of Tasmania and the Bass Strait is going to be really violent indeed but we're not expecting winds to be too crazy strong for Tasmania because they're actually expected to be south of this low pressure system. Wave heights are going to be a big, big problem with this weather system though. Just have a look at this as we pull this forecast forward in towards early Sunday morning into the Bass Strait. Wave heights between that four to six metre mark, you can see them here actually pushing closer towards six metres into the Bass Strait and a wave period of about nine or 10 seconds. So that is an incredibly short wave period, which means these waves, as high as they are, they're going to carry some massive, massive power. And like I said, once this weather swing, or well, once the winds swing around to southerly for the uh, uh, southwest coast of Victoria around Waterball and Apollo Bay, we will see some very significant severe weather conditions unfold there, not only from the winds, but also from the waves as showers move through. Now, rainfall accumulations aren't actually expected to be anything too crazy from this weather system here. This is a look at four-day rainfall accumulations encompassing the remainder of this weather event, the, the remainder of this week of winter's weather, actually. And you can see nothing in the way of standout rainfall accumulations is forecast to materialise. Rainfall accumulations could approach 50 millimetres around the Adelaide Hills. We may see up towards 35 millimetres through the Adelaide City area. And rainfall accumulations between 20 to 30 millimetres are also possible onto the southern parts of the Air Peninsula south of Streaky Bay. And good rainfall accumulations pushing close to 40 millimetres also expected around Warrnambool on the south coast of Victoria and rainfall accumulations up around that 50 millimetre mark expected into the Victorian Alps and the New South Wales Snow Mountains and even into parts of the Blue Mountains as well. Rainfall accumulations will remain heavy for the west coast of Tasmania with maximum falls around that 70 to 80 millimetre mark expected there with isolated falls pushing close to 100 millimetres of possibility for the west coast of Tasmania. But apart from that, nothing in the way of standout rainfall accumulations. Melbourne looking at about 15 millimetres. Other major population centres into central Victoria looking at between 10 to 20 millimetres. Nothing crazy. Even Sydney not expecting anything in the way of rainfall. It's just going to be a whole lot of wind blowing around for the Sydney area there. Rainfall kind of drops off once you get north of about Mildura or Griffith. A few millimetres are possible for those locations, but anything further north than that is just going to be bonus rainfall at this point in time. 
Snowfall is still tipped to be very significant from this weather event here because of the cold pull that's going to be dragged around onto the western side of the system here, resulting in those southerly winds, and that's why the conditions are going to get so violent. Some pretty significant snowfall accumulations are expected across the Snow Mountains, pushing close to 40 centimetres at Threadburr and Perisher, and then between 25 to 30 centimetres possible around the New, uh, Victorian Alps as well, around Mount Buller or Hottam or uh, Mount Borbor. We could even see some significant snowfall accumulations at, down at Mount Borbor with up to 50, mil, uh, 50 15 centimetres centimetres expected there rather. Up to around that 15 to 20 centimetre mark expected around the Lake St. Clair National Park and into the high country of Tasmania. A couple of centimetres possible for Mount Wellington and maybe 5 to 10 centimetres of the Ben Lomond National Park as well. And yet this over in South Australia, this is not a fluke, this is not the European forecast being absolutely crazy, but we may see a very light dusting of snow into the Adelaide Hills around Mount Lofty uh, or into the Flinders Ranges. Into the Flinders Ranges in this little pocket here that I've got the cursor on right now, snow will fall above 600 metres and around the Adelaide Hills, snow will fall above 700 metres. So it's really only the tippy top of Mount Lofty that can expect snowfall accumulations into the Adelaide Hills. We may see some more widespread snowfall dustings about 100 kilometres north of Adelaide. It'll be interesting to see what materialises there. But yeah, definitely some interesting stuff, that's for sure. This is some serious, or well, seriously violent severe weather, and you can already see the precursor to this weather system developing well to the south of Australia this morning. It is going to be a rough one, that's for sure. So hunker down, buckle up, make sure you're hitting all of the severe weather warnings that are currently being issued ahead of this weather system here. Make sure you're ready for some pretty significant, some gnarly severe weather. Uh, this is usual weather for this time of the year, but it definitely is going to pack a little bit more of a punch than we would normally expect from a weather system like this. Nothing to talk about elsewhere around Australia, apart from up into towards far north Queensland, where we do have some more significant rainfall accumulations possible. Now on the forecast where we were talking about in yesterday's forecast update, this is a look at the first two weeks of September. Have a look at how widespread and how much rainfall is possible through inland parts of Queensland and into the Northern Territory. I saw this on the forecast modeling last night. I was like, I don't know how to make sense of this right now, especially in the month of September. This is highly unusual stuff. But it's, hold, it's held strong and it's changed a little bit from last night's forecast, but it's held strong into, to, uh, into today. I would just like to say that this rainfall that's occurring here through the Northern Territory and into Queensland happens a lot later on into the forecast period. You can see it doesn't actually develop until about the 7th or the 8th of September. And we're gonna revisit this onto the first day of September. It's just far too early to be making any kind of reasonably accurate forecast for this part of the Northern Territory or this part of Queensland at this point in time. Far North Queensland, though, I do have a little bit more confidence in being able to make a forecast. And as we pointed out yesterday, after the 4th of September, rainfall is going to pile on into the Casper Coast. Not in a significant capacity. We're not talking about a couple of hundred millimetres, but have a look at this. Widespread showers and storms forecast to move into the Casper Coast throughout the 4th and the 5th of September. That will increase in the danger of rainforest as well through the 4th and the 5th of September as well. Rainfall taking a brief hiatus until about the 7th, and then you can see showers and storms continuing to pile on into the Casper Coast and the danger of rainforest right out until this forecast expires on the 11th of September. And rainfall accumulations looking quite healthy as well. Have a look at this week-long rainfall accumulations after the 4th of September. Falls around that 100 millimeter mark expected through the Casper Coast. And as we've been looking at in previous forecast updates, falls could actually get a little bit heavier than that. And we won't be writing off rainfall accumulations closer to 150, uh, 150 millimeters rather. And then into the Daintree as well, rainfall accumulations on this forecast, I would say are probably a little bit bullish, pushing close to 150 millimeters of the Daintree. That's highly unusual for this time of the year, even for them. Uh, and we might be talking about rainfall accumulations closer to 60 to 100, but still some very healthy falls are possible. And far north Queensland, after about the 4th of September, some wet weather is going to be building for your locations. That's only a week away now, so it's not going to be long until we see the southeasterly shift in the wind observations through the Coral Sea. Right now, a lot of these reefs blowing out of the north or the northeast, so we'll be waiting to see when they do shift around to the southeast and that's going to be when the rainfall is going to begin to pick up and begin to build. Temperatures are also really starting to build across far north Queensland as well. Have a look at this right now. Temperatures pushing close to the mid uh, the mid 20s already. Port Douglas 25 degrees and this was just a few minutes ago. So temperatures really beginning to build and another warm day expected. Another warm and humid day expected up in towards far north Queensland. Uh, and that is a clear sign of rainfall that's going to begin to build, especially over into the Atherton Tablelands. Temperatures are really beginning to build now into the mid 30s throughout the day. So the temperatures are building, humidity is building, the winds are going to begin to build very shortly. Rainfall is going to be imminent. This isn't just a fluke on the forecast modeling here. This is a long range look at what we could be seeing in terms of rainfall. And it is very much a, an imminent aspect on the forecast up in towards far north Queensland. But on that 
uh, that's going to do it for today. I will revisit the forecast for Queensland in a future forecast update, so stick around if that uh, does take your fancy. But again, it's just a little bit too uncertain for me right now to be able to make an accurate and reliable forecast, so I'm going to avoid it for the time being. If you have enjoyed this forecast update, then please let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. A special shout out, of course, goes out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not only show about them. So, of course, as always, their support is much appreciated. But that is going to do it for me today on your Thursday. Have a great day. Buckle up for severe weather if you are in the southeast of the nation. And we'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.